Hello? <laughs> I keep trying new setups for my Facebook Lives, so uh, just bear with me until I find the right position and place. Plus, I redecorated my entire office recently and switched everything around, so my space is very different. So, uh, good afternoon. Hello and welcome, welcome. My name is Gina Vidality, and um, <clears throat> I am the owner of EmbracingImperfect.com, a blog for moms who are raising kids with special needs. Hi, Courtney. How are you? Um, I just wanted to welcome you to today's live. So every Friday at uh, 2 p.m., um, I kind of hustle my butt back from the gym <laughs> and uh, do Facebook Live on different topics. So today's topic is uh, one that's really near and dear to my heart, embarrassingly so, um, because my topic today is indecision. Hi Denise, how you doing? And uh, indecision is a huge problem in my life and uh, how to learn to deal with it and um, so I'm going to give you some tips on how to get over your indecision about whatever, whether it's minor or important, because we all have the minor one, right? Um, how many of you had that argument like 10 times a week? I don't know what we want for dinner, honey, honey. I don't know what I want for dinner. You decide. No, you decide. Hi, Janelle. How you doing? So it can be that basic, but of course, indecision, that's not really a very important decision to make um, unless, you know, you have... Uh, health problems dealing with food, but uh, what's a more life-challenging decisions is should I take this job? Should I leave this job? Should I go to the school? Should I uh, join this church or group or uh, gym? Uh, should I go speak at the Capitol uh, or protest something I disagree with? Uh, so those are really more critical decision-making and uh, issues and those of us who struggle with even the tiniest basic decisions uh like i have had for so long um you know we need like a really good process by which to we can make decisions so uh i was giving this a lot of thought over the week and uh so the first thing i want to tell you is it's definitely not anything i've perfected um but i think that's a good thing i think a little indecision is good in your life because indecision can help you choose which uh, it, it can help you make sh make you reflective enough to make sure uh, you're making the right choices. And I've been thinking a lot about decision making uh, ever since a couple of weeks ago. I follow a lady named Lair Leitner and I take her uh, marketing classes. And she is a Christian who used to be like a top earner in several MLM companies. And now she teaches people how to market and network and um, she, uh, every now and then she does these lives that integrate business and Christian faith and they're just amazing. And she did this live and talked about uh, this um, quote from a guy named Spurgeon um, about the issue of discernment. So discernment is kind of a Christian term, but anybody can have discernment. Discernment is really just knowing uh, being wise in your choices, being wise in your judgments about other people. Um, and what Spurgeon said about discernment is that discernment is the difference between knowing what's right and knowing what's almost right. So as soon as I heard her say that, like I wrote it down and it has been on my mind every single day because that's when we really struggle with decisions, right? When we've got two shiny objects and they both look equally good and we both, we want to move towards both of them. Um, but we can only go towards one. What do we do? Uh, so, um, and that's really made me very reflective about decisiveness. And that's why I kind of wanted to do this little Facebook live. <laughs> so I think, um, it's really important though, to understand that when we're indecisive, indecisiveness really is part of like fear. So it's fear of, it's really fear of responsibility, right? Because we make choices and we are so terrified that we are going to make the right, the wrong choice um, in all kinds of things. And the reality of life is there is no choice. You cannot make a decision without a risk. There's almost no decisions you make that don't even have at least a tiny bit of a risk, right? So how do you make a really important decision when you are facing this fear of making the wrong choice? Hi, Gina, welcome. And I think part of it is understanding that uh, uh, 
90% of decisions are not 100% irrevocable. I'm sure there are, uh, you know, serious issues like um, maybe a medical health issue, like a, a transplant or something that could be irrevocable um, or choosing not to. And then, you know, you may fail and uh, your heart may fail or whatever may fail and you may die. So there are some irrevocable decisions. But when we're talking about the main uh, important decisions in our life, like spending our money, changing our jobs or our careers, um, choosing uh, choosing to go into business or not, those are not as life-threatening. They're not life-threatening. They may cost you some money. They may cost you an uncomfortable transition period, uh, but that doesn't mean it's the wrong choice. <laughs> so I uh, well, just wanted to really share about how I... I don't really fret about decisions anymore, but that's part of my faith. Like, I don't really worry about things as much because I believe that God is in control. So I think one of the really important things before you start decision making, if you really battle with decisions, is to try to find the root of that fear that is holding you up from making decisions and deal with that first. So don't even like think about decision making yet. Um, Ask yourself why you are so averse to risk and why risk really scares you so deeply. Because I really think that is the basis of people who have terminal indecision like I've had so much in my life. So as you know, if you listened to me last year, my word of the year last year was courage. And um, I learned so much. Like I would just want to do courage again <laughs> This year's word is not working out too well, but <laughs> that's a whole nother Facebook Live. Um, but uh, courage, it, it helped me, it changed me from the inside out. Like, And it wasn't even big uh, jump off a building type courage steps. It was little baby steps that led to bigger baby steps that led to giant leaps, but incrementally. And I learned to overcome so many fears. Um, and, and I think that once you get over your fear, once you figure out what is the root that you are so afraid to make decisions, once you get over that, the decision making process becomes a lot easier, right? Uh, so I think step number one to learning how to make good decisions is to overcome your fear of why you are afraid of taking a risk, making a decision. Um, and you know, that may not be something you can deal with as easily as I did last year. I, I won't want to say it was easy. I dealt with it through lots of prayer, lots of scripture, lots of experimenting, taking baby steps. And I didn't even conquer the fears that I had set out to conquer. <laughs> there are still things that I, I said that I, like I wanted to learn to swim and I still haven't. <laughs> and a couple other things like that. Um, it was more on a heart level that I dealt with my fears. Uh, so, but that doesn't mean that you, you know, you might have a traumatic thing that happened to you in your childhood. Um, uh, it's called ACEs, what, um, Adverse Childhood Experiences. It's actually like a whole organization that helps people with that. But you, um, that I wrote for them and got paid for it a couple of months ago. But um, you may have had a traumatic experience as a child or as an adult. You might have, you know, I lived in New York during 911. So that was very traumatic. I can say honestly for anyone who lived and worked in Manhattan, um, it, it just was. All of us had varying degrees of PTSD after the event. And it was a real difficulty to struggle with uh, that attack. But um there are a lot of people, I knew a psychologist at the time who said that there was she, that was her first influx of having teenage and young adult people, they came to overcome their fears. Um, and part of what their problems were was the, the fear that they suffered after that attack was that they were just stuck, they could they were frozen. In other words, they couldn't make, move forward because they couldn't make decisions because they were stuck in this traumatic event. Uh, so if you need to go to um, a therapist or a counselor or uh, see someone in uh, your church or your faith group or whatever that can help you through that, you know, there's no shame in that. You really need to try to get over your fear before you can make a decision. But now if you're sort of past fear, if you once you've got through that, you still need to know how to make the really important decisions. 
So the old saw, <laughs> and I feel like this is a theme with me now, like, you know, last time when I talked about gratitude, uh, contentedness, and I talked about gratitude, I, I talked about how listing five things a day, which is the old saw, never really worked for me. Um, well, the old saw on making a decision is list the pros and cons, but the problem with that is that not every pro and every con is equal. And it might be, it, it's going to change all the time. So if you have a formula for making decisions, it's going to change because there is a period of your life. For example, if you're looking at a new job, um, there's a period of your life where you're looking at a job strictly because you really need more money to live on. And so the most important thing is the money. Uh, there's a period of your life where you're like, you know what, I really don't feel useful at this job and I don't like what I do and I wanna do something that engages me and uses my talents. So you're focusing more on your career and then usually there's a point in your life if you have a family where you're like, I am spending 60 hours of work a week and I never see my kids, I never see my spouse, I don't wanna live like this anymore. And there's also health reasons. For example, uh, somebody uh, recently had a prayer request for She's changing jobs into a less stressful, lower paying, less hours job because she's got too much stress um, or, you know, and that's a physical issue as well because stress will eventually impact your physical health. So like you can look it on paper and go, I want a new job for all. This is a great job because um, it pays well and it builds my career and I get to jet all over the country. But then you might think, well, gee, <laughs> flying's a lot of stress <laughs> and I will never get to see my family. So those factors, even though you've probably got more factors on the pros, those two con factors are gonna outweigh your pro factors. So you have to really sit down before you make the decision and think about what's my priority? What's really, really on a gut level important to me? And then, hi Diane, welcome. Uh, what's important to me and why do I wanna do this in terms of what's important to me, <laughs> right? So you can't uh, really make a decision without weighing those factors. A list, a pros and cons list, you can do the list, but you wanna really, if you do the list, you need to weight it, right? So you need to say money has a value of five for me right now, or money only has a value of one, but ability to work from home has a value of five. Or, so you have to really weight those factors. And then, so once you've dealt with the fear, once you've prioritized what's important to you in general in your life, um, and then pivot it towards that particular decision, uh, the next thing uh, you, ah, I just lost the third thing. <laughs> I was just talking so much, I forgot the third thing. Um, once you work out those two things, oh, I know, uh, you have to then take the leap and make, uh, well, you also have to, you might want to like run some of these by people. If it's a decision that's a really big decision, you might want to check with people you trust and love and care about, not just if it'll impact them. Of course, definitely talk with anyone it's going to impact, but also talk to them about, um, like, you know, they might look at the, the decision. I know I do this with my husband all the time. I might say, oh, I can do A, B, or C, and I don't know which of those things I should do or whether I should do um, any of them. And he will usually come up with something that I've never thought of. <laughs> so you might have, if you have someone you trust that you can talk to about that, a good friend, your spouse, whatever, somebody you're very close with, um, have them look at the situation and your choices of decisions and um, they can maybe figure out a thing that you're like, oh, I never thought of that. Um, and then that might, uh, from time to time, that doesn't, that doesn't have an impact, but every now and then it'll have, oh, that really pivots my whole decision-making process. So that's important too. And uh, as for me, uh, because I'm a Christian, I check all my decisions with God. I don't always get an answer, <laughs> like a clear cut. So, you know, sometimes you're praying and you feel yes, or you see all the signs and you're like, this is a yes. And then sometimes you're like, hmm, it's oddly silent. <laughs> um, you know, he's, he's my go-to being that I talk to about major decisions, but sometimes I don't get 
uh, any feedback. So, um, but if you are a person of faith, pray about it, pray for wisdom and guidance and direction and discernment. Is this the right choice or is this the, um, the best choice? Is this the better choice or is this the best choice of all? And then finally, the final thing that you need to do is you need to accept the risk because there is no decision without risk, right? Even if you decide, I am feeling lazy tonight, I am going to go to the store and get my kids day of pizza, um, even though we've had it 12 times this month, you know, that's a decision that's impacting their health and I've made it and sad to say, uh, it's not the best choice for them. It's far better for me to fresh cook a meal um, but if I'm really tired, I'm having a really grueling month like this month, um, it, it's going to happen more and you have to accept responsibility for that risk that um, I might not be doing the best thing here. But obviously, if you're going to something like a new job or something, you really don't know um, how to, and I know this from my husband who was a contractor, um, and he still is, but he's transitioning to full time, hopefully, God willing, um, but he's had different jobs that it we it just he would show up on site and it would not in any way shape or form be as described on paper he would not be reporting to the person that he was told that he was going to be reporting to uh that gelled with him things changed around somebody doesn't like um you know it's that's like the reality is you have to take that risk and see what happens and sometimes, sometimes you jump and you take a risk and it actually folds into something else. So last year I worked for a content mill called Audiential and um, I was there several months. And by the time I got to the summer, oh my gosh, I hated that job. It didn't pay well, but it was steady income. And um, I was so tired of writing those articles that I never got any critiques. So I thought I was doing well. And they just called me one day and said, as of tomorrow, tomorrow, uh, you're not working for us anymore. And um, it was very painful. It was good experience. Don't get me wrong. It, I, I think I've learned a lot and it taught me a lot. Um, I don't think I ever take a job like that again, unless I really had to. But I, I have the experience now, so it's okay if I have to. And I put, uh, I put it out on Facebook. And that's how I got the job that I keep talking about that I love right now. <laughs> um, because I was so taken aback by it and I was upset. And I just posted that I was upset. And then people uh, thought that like somebody died. And I was like, no, 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 it's, not, it's nothing bad. I just, I lost my gig. I lost my writing gig. And um, so that's when someone offered me another job. And uh, that all came to fruition. So I feel like if I hadn't been an audiential uh, and, and suffered through those grueling, whatever it was, seven or eight months, um, I wouldn't have gotten this amazing, awesome opportunity because I wouldn't have been putting it out there. So, you know, you have to also look at, uh, you take your risk and your risk might, it might not work out, but you made the best decision with the information that you had at the time. You cannot guilt yourself over having made a choice that doesn't work out because you just can't see the future and you can't see everything. If you're making a choice though, um, and you know, you, you are really prioritizing the wrong thing and you're making your choice based on prioritizing the wrong thing, you're making your choice based on fear, you're making your choice based on what somebody else said instead of your gut, um, or you know, you, you know it's not God's will that you do this choice, all those things are going to um, not, you're going to get to that choice and get to that place of whatever you decided to do and it's not going to work out and then you're going to feel bad. Um, but either way, once you jump, once you make the decision, um, you commit to it, do the best you can in it. And if it doesn't work out, just take it as a life lesson. There's nothing else you can really do about it. Um, just don't, and don't, because if you start to feel guilty, then you're going to start to have fear about the next decision you make or in the next job you take in that, or the next decision you make in that same area. So don't do that. <laughs> Just know that every decision is, comes with a risk and that once you take, make that decision and you take that risk, just leave it behind you because you did the best you could making that choice. And, um, so that's it for me. So those are the four, uh, um, Four things you need to know to, if you are poor at decision making. 
Um, now, if you're poor at decision making for your dinner, <laughs> um, you can take turns with your, especially if you're married, take turns with your spouse. <laughs> you know, I'll decide dinner Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You decide Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and on Sundays we'll eat out. <laughs> um, and or just choose the healthiest option, um, or create a meal plan. I fail epically all the time at creating meal plans. <laughs> I've sat down in my life as a mom probably like 50 times to make a meal plan, and it just, it never works. Um, but, you know, just come to a way that you can deal with those little decisions and just start making them. Just start taking the bull by the horns and just making chicken. <laughs> but um, for the big decisions, you need to um, let go, understand why you are afraid to make that decision and deal with your fear. Uh, you need to um, prioritize what's important to you at the time, not just a list of pros and cons, but weighted pros and cons based on your priorities in life at that period in time. Uh, talk to people you trust. Um, including God, <laughs> to uh, give you direction and guidance and, and try to discern uh, which ways you, you should go. If they notice anything that you never thought about before, that's good. You know, they might bring up a personality trait that you're like, oh, yeah, that would not work for me. <laughs> um, my husband's done that to me any number of times. <laughs> and um, I mean, in a good way, in a good way. And, um, and then... Just make the leap, take the risk, do it, make the decision. And um, once the decision's made and you're committed to it, let go of the guilt. Just even if it doesn't work out, just let go of the guilt. And and because um, if it doesn't work out, it can lead you into a better place where something will work out much better. And that's it for me. I do not have a recommendation on books or, or anything today because um, I was just running around like a chicken without a head all week and I have a ton of work on my desk, which is a good thing. So uh, that's it for me. That's how to make a decision. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead, drop them below and I will answer them. Um, please share this uh, Facebook Live if you liked it. Um, and uh, that's it for me. It is a Friday. Boy, we are going into Palm Sunday. Can you believe it? <laughs> and uh, we are going into Miracle League baseball season out here. So it's very exciting. And I hope you are having a great spring. Um, I'm so happy that it's spring. <laughs> and I hope you have a lovely uh, Palm Sunday if you celebrate. And um, that's it. So have a great weekend and remember to embrace the imperfect within you today. Thanks again. I'm Gina Badali. I will see you here next week at 2 p.m. We're going to talk about giving.